This is Cents Per Mile, featuring Charles Gracie, Paul Gibson, and Josh Haynes. Everyone knows the trucking industry has issues, but most people are afraid to talk about it. Someone's got to do it. With loads of recruiting and marketing experience and backed by the largest driver audience in the world, we deliver carriers the driver perspective, find solutions, and help make sense make sense. Welcome to Sense Per Mile. I'm your host, Charles Gracie. And I'm your co-host, Paul Gibson. Hey, I'm Josh Haynes. Guys, what are we talking about today? We're talking about the Driver's Bill of Rights and Truck Driver's Appreciation Week. Yep, it is Truck Drivers Appreciation Week, and a long time ago, uh, CDL Life wrote an article uh, theoretically laying out what a driver's bill of rights would look like if they could actually get legal help in the government to actually make regulations that actually help truck drivers instead of making their, their jobs harder. Um, and they actually updated it in 2019, um, and we're going to kind of go over each of those today to see what that looks like, uh, because we appreciate truck drivers, and we're constantly talking about how regulations should help them but you can also help us uh because we're uh we're all over iheart radio amazon music spotify wherever you get your podcasts plus we're on youtube so if you could like subscribe rate whatever you do on the platform where uh you take this in at that would help us out quite a bit because it'll help push us out further you can also go to sensepermilepodcast.com where you can suggest a topic to be a guest or even to become a sponsor Sponsors? Who's our sponsor today, Charles? We got Mesilla Valley Transportation, where you can help move America forward with MVT by going to m-v-t.com. Yep, and also uh, there is a link that you can access. Uh, so coming up is F3 Freight Waves Future of Freight Festival. Ooh, that's a mouthful. Um, but there's a link where you can get a substantial discount, and it's through us. And so you basically get a huge discount because you know some guys um, and it is confirmed. Uh, we will all three be there. So uh, let's party. It's going to be a good time and you don't want to miss it. And it's in Chattanooga. Yeah. Where millennials going to retire. Anyway. So that being said, it's time for the news. All right. So it's time for 10 to news where we go back over the past couple of weeks and check some of the coolest, weirdest uh, or most relevant stories from CDL life. And we talk about them. So the first one is a major trailer manufacturer got hit with a nuclear $462 million verdict. And yeah, and we don't really like to talk about fatalities on the show, uh, but it's more the situation around it. Well, it's a pretty messed up situation. Yeah. And what happened was, is obviously this person rear-ended a trailer that's on them typically, but... Uh, the trailer, the back end guard completely just like collapsed in. So it didn't do anything to stop the car from going under the trailer. But there's more. Yeah, there is. We'll get there in a second. We cannot skip out the fact that there was a blood alcohol level over the legal limit. No, that's not that's not relevant to the story. You could say that. And then the other thing was that he was speaking. None of that matters because the lawsuit has nothing to do with the driver's state. If you're drunk. There's nothing you're doing drunk that's going to make a difference on whether or not that collapses in. Well, the argument can be made if you weren't legally supposed to be on the road in the first place that this could have never happened. Well, I think you're going from the mindset of suing the trucking company. They're not suing the trucking company. They're literally only suing the manufacturer of the trailer because the trailer was faulty. Regardless of what happened, that's a safety measure that's supposed to be in place from that trailer company, and it did not function doesn't matter if you're drunk and your airbag doesn't go off if your airbag didn't go off you could still sue that truck company this is america where you can sue anybody for anything and there's a good chance you're gonna win and this is why we sit in the situation we do as an industry we're we're rolling lottery tickets and the, now even the trailer manufacturers and, and grant they it shouldn't be faulty but that that's the problem but i think <laughs> I don't know if correlation and causation. I don't know what it is the situation. But a few days later, that same trailer manufacturer uh got a- another lawsuit that they lost for discrimination. So there is the new Pregnant Workers Fairness Act, and essentially they had this employee who was pregnant and uh she tried to get moved to a different position uh where she didn't have to work on her stomach and they basically told her no 
Um, so she went all the way to eight months pregnant, having to work on her stomach. And then finally just chose to resign at eight months because she was worried about the health of her pregnancy. Um, I don't know if there if there's any correlation, but I mean, there was a seven month pregnant lady working on trailers at the same company where the trailers didn't work out because the company wouldn't give the lady a different job. <laughs> Sounds like you're going to have to do some detective work here, Paul. Yeah, we'll see. Anyway, so it is time to go behind the wheel. All right, so it's time for behind the wheel. So being powered by CDL Life uh, with the largest audience of truck drivers in the world, we can ask them questions, get real opinions from real drivers about real issues. Uh, and so it's Truck Driver Appreciation Week. Um, and we decided to just ask bluntly, as a driver, do you care about Driver Appreciation Week? Uh, and 32% said yes, but also 68% said no. And then out of all the comments, no one who had a positive view of Truck Driver Appreciation Week actually left a comment. I mean, can you blame them, though? Most of the Truck Driver Appreciation Week is a bulk message coming across at Qualcomm, a couple social media posts of mechanics and office staff eating barbecue, and you're out there saying, well, this is all for me, but I'm not getting to enjoy any of it. But thanks for the bulk message. It was very personable. Yeah, well, I mean, most of them didn't even mention that. Most of them did mention the food. And like one driver, which I think was interesting, you know, because we, we always point out the fact that like, oh, not everybody can get to the terminal for the food, so it's always the office workers. His argument was, I'm not going to lose money for a hot dog. I mean, what if it's a really good hot dog? Like, I'm in, I'm in San Antonio, and they got crispy hot dogs. I didn't know that was a thing, but it is. It might be. That's pretty interesting. I don't think I've ever had a crispy hot dog. <laughs> Me neither until here. But we had racetrack on last week, Pilot. There's so many truck stops that would take so much less time that are giving away hot dogs. Yeah. That, and coffee. That checks out. So, uh, but it is interesting to talk to actual drivers and the fact that they are, um, for the most part, just kind of jaded on the whole thing. Um, a lot of them talked about like, oh, I'm going to get off the road for pizza, um, you know, or like that kind of thing, that it's not really anything of substance. And the majority of them did say uh, something to the extent of, of pay me and that will show you my, or that will show me your appreciation. And I think the more we talk about it, the more that's going to come up. But uh, it's time to go behind the desk with 10th Street. All right, it's time to go behind the desk. And today we have Marla with 10th Street. Thanks for having me. Did you know that nearly 70% of truck drivers feel that their rights are often overlooked and undervalued? That number really hits home for me, having been in the driver's seat myself. It shows just how important it is for drivers to have clear and accessible rights and resources. One of the ways we're addressing this at 10th Street is through the Driver Pulse app. The app empowers drivers by giving them the ability to manage their driving careers directly from their cell phones. The Driver Pulse app provides drivers with transparency by providing them a direct line of communication with their companies and potential employers and giving them access to all the crucial information they need. It's all about making sure drivers feel informed and supported in their roles. And since it's Driver Appreciation Week, we're also excited to highlight our special National Truck Driver Appreciation Week sweepstakes. By engaging daily with Driver Pulse, Drivers not only stay connected, but they also have a chance to win up to $500 in e-gift cards from major retailers like Walmart, Amazon, Home Depot, and many more. Our goal is to help drivers feel valued and heard every day of the year. Thanks for having me, and let's continue to support and appreciate our incredible drivers. We're excited to announce CDL Connect sessions powered by CDL Life. Eight exciting webinars packed with insights and innovative strategies to revolutionize the way you connect with drivers. Join us on Thursday, September 19th for our next session, Optimizing Data and Processes for Recruitment Success, with Nick Shopler, Chief Operating Officer of CDL Life, 
Discover how to optimize your recruitment data and processes for greater success. Click the link in the description to register and browse future sessions. All right, so it's time to make sense, make sense. And and it's Truck Driver Appreciation Week where, you know, like, I don't know, there's a lot of companies who do it right. Uh, but there's even more that do it wrong. It's like you've been doing this forever. You go in with like a concept of a plan and then the drivers are there. And but it's mostly the office employees. there eating your dogs. <laughs> so I don't know, Charles, what what are you? Th- why are you in a suit? I'm ready for truck drivers appreciation week. I'm going to go to the barbecue and then post that on social media. <laughs> All right. Well, anyway, so it's truck drivers appreciation. We, we've talked about that enough. What we're really talking about is this article, like I said earlier, that CDL life had put out uh, a long time ago, and it's essentially a bill of rights. So, you know, um, the 10 amendments that should be no brainers, the drivers should have, uh, and that they should be entitled to, even if they're not currently. Well, and the fact that we got to put them into a bill of rights, I mean, like we're going to go through these and some of them are comical that we even have to write them down. 100 percent so i guess uh we've only got a limited amount of time before we bring on our guests so we should probably get started right number one treat me like a person because that's a job perk right that's that was always like oh i used to say that all the time you know like oh i'm gonna treat you with respect like how terrible is that job if like being treated with respect is like a job perk that means it's not understood to be normal well i mean that's like right number two my voice my vote counts yeah that definitely um That definitely doesn't happen a lot. You know, it's kind of like when you were talking about like the Qualcomm message that just comes out in bulk. Well, and it spells it out. It says, do not listen to the special interest group or the suits. Listen to me. (laughs) It's crazy. Yeah. Well, I mean, and and that that comes down to lobby groups and we talk about a specific one. We've kind of left it alone for a while. But yeah, I mean, you you have, like we talked about a few episodes ago, insurance companies, lobbyist groups trying to make all these things happen. And these companies have to listen to them because they're the ones mostly with the ears of the regulators and legislatures. Could you imagine if instead of putting drivers in mascot uniforms, the ATA put drivers in the lobby groups? I mean, I think that's called OIDA. (laughs) So um, let's see. Number three is I should be paid for the time I work. I don't know if anybody watching remembers my security guard math from the other day, but yeah, like, uh, like tens, like all of it, like detention should just be a thing. You shouldn't have to wait like two hours. Uh, Any other job. If you're in, you're working, you're getting paid, but drivers detention first two hours, three hours, four hours, whatever someone deemed was appropriate. A whole nother discussion, but there's other times. You got drivers going through orientation where someone's like, hey, you know, $100 a day, a Greyhound bus, like pay them for their time. Yeah. I mean, and, and you know, that's not how it works for off. Like, there's sometimes full disclosure because we do have day jobs. Charles will reach out to me at like six and be like, hey, man, can you get me this? And I'm not getting paid for that. So there's like literally been times I have actually screenshotted the time on my phone. And that's what I send them back, and I don't say anything. Um, but, yeah, I mean, that's not how jobs work. It's not how it works. Um, so I would say next is I can go home when I want to or need to. Yeah, this one, this one's crazy to me because I've done the job, and our guests coming on the show have done the job. And the fact that you have to ask for permission to go home, I get the logistics of it. We need to get you routed home. Truck needs to be made, making money. But like you got situations where drivers have family emergencies and they're waiting a day to get a load home. Like, I'm sorry, at a certain cost of doing business. When you actually read the amendment too, it, it's not as uh, upfront as it, it sounds. Cause obviously fuel is a thing. Deadhead miles are terrible for um, you know, your bottom line and stuff. But the, what it says actually is, when I signed on with your company, you promised me home time. Deliver on that promise. I fulfill mine to you each day. So it's not even saying like I should be able to like full on like, oh, sorry, peace out. I'm going home. It's like, hey, you told me you were going to get me home at this point. And it's been double that. You told me every weekend. Don't tell me, oh, that means I can get you home any time in the weekend. That means get me home when you promised, when you recruited me. And, and I don't think it's too far-fetched to ask that. 
No. And I mean, that bait and switch, you could even move that into office jobs again, which I love to do. That's why I locked myself in the closet. But right, number five. I mean, this is a huge one. It is huge. I mean, uh, I loved that this actually, like when John Oliver, who's not even in the industry, did that episode on trucks a few years back that like shook everybody. Um, This is one of the main things he brought up. I know when I'm tired, I need to take a break regardless of your hours or service. The driver knows how they're feeling. You expect them to be safe, but yet you're letting something else dictate what safe looks like. And then whether or not they followed that or they didn't, they're at fault if they're operating unsafe. The FMCSA covers this very distinctively, and it's very uh, well written when the driver is the captain of that ship. The driver determines when they're unsafe to drive, and people just need to respect that. Yeah, I mean, it's the same idea like if you're on a road trip or like times that I've been on tour playing music. It's like there's certain, no, like not necessarily everybody's a bad driver, but some people can drive for seven hours. Some people can drive for 15. Um, everybody has a different limit with that. So it's crazy to put them in a box. Can we just note that I just said the FMCSA did something right? Uh, that's why I kind of talked over it, man. <laughs> But, all right, so the next one is, I have the right to a clean shower anytime I need one, and it should be inexpensive. It's not even asking for it to be free, just inexpensive. Yeah, it should be affordable, it should be reasonable, and it should be accessible. And the fact that, again, we have to put this on a bill, or you got the bathroom access thing. I mean, this is nuts. It's ludicrous. Treat them like a human being. They're doing an important job. Right. And then a lot of people like complain. They're like, oh, man, some of these truck drivers are smelly and they're terrible and stuff. I've gone to several terminals where like people have stories about how bad a driver smelled. It's like, what do you what are you doing to help them with that issue? You know, it's like, sorry, that person runs hard and they don't really have the opportunity to take a shower. Right. Number eight. I am only responsible for the accidents I have caused. Mm, that's a good one. Yeah. I mean, because that, I mean, most drivers, like when you're processing them and stuff, like between that and insurance companies, preventable accidents all of a sudden become your problem. Like it makes it way harder to get hired. And I know there's several companies that won't hire you if you've had multiple non preventable accidents. One, well, it's crazy too, because if you look at how a truck is operated and you understand its limitations, it cannot stop on a dime. And in most rear end situations, if a a vehicle rear ends another one, they're immediately at fault. But what about all those people that cut off a semi truck when it's doing its job and it's operating safely and then slam on the brakes? In most of those cases, the driver's gonna be at fault just by how things are written and how they're investigated. These are things where I think, you know, as much as we frown on technology, we're starting to see the technology catch up a little bit and exonerate drivers from situations like that. Those dash cams have been huge on this. All right. So I am entitled to good, healthy food options while I'm on the road is number nine. Yeah, man. I mean, especially like the the strictness of like a lot of the different uh, DOT physicals, which also can vary by doctor that you go to, which is also insane to me. Or chiropractor. <laughs> it's true. Um, pop, pop. Uh, but yeah, it's it's kind of crazy that we don't set these people up to be healthy. Yeah. Well, I mean, McDonald's has lettuce and tomato and onion on their burgers. Right. But I, I, what I'm saying is, is we don't set them up to be healthy, but they're one of the only jobs where you have to be a certain level of healthy to do it. Like, I know some people in some offices that are definitely would not pass a dot physical well and and it's crazy because we talk about the driver shortage and uh this is one of the things that if we support our drivers and we give them the things that are necessary for them to be healthy you don't have to lose them due to not being able to get a dot physical it's true which kind of almost a little bit ties into right number 10 truck stops are built for me supported by me and should cater to me i don't hate that no i mean Again, you, there's there's a thing happening out there. It's been happening uh, and gaining momentum, and there's different arguments about truck stop parking. Should it be free with the amount of money drivers spend at the truck stops? Uh, paid parking, you're starting to see it move in and take up more of what drivers are considering, you know, 
areas that they could legitimately park for free in the past. But then there's the maintenance of those areas and making it a better experience for the driver. So I understand both sides to it. And uh, truck stops, customer service. It, it, it shouldn't feel like you're walking into a detention facility. Like they're there to service you. You're spending money. You're a patron of that business. It should be more respected. Yeah, I mean, you're there. You're a truck driver at a truck stop. You know, you don't make all of your money off of people on road trips. Um, all right. Well, we've actually got a couple guests that can speak to a lot of this pretty well, and they'll be on right after the break. Masia Valley Transportation, founded by truck drivers for truck drivers. Why choose MVT? Well, it's simple. I started off as a driver. Now I'm managing routes. With MVT, the sky's the limit. Balance is key. State-of-the-art equipment, a strong focus on safety, and a family-driven company culture where respect and hard work are at the core. Masia Valley Transportation, where we care about you. Join our family today. We're back, and we have our guest. I'm going to give a quick introduction. None of them are strangers to the show, but we got Justin Martin, Gord, and Lombard joining us on the Cents Per Mile to talk. Drivers' rights, truck drivers' appreciation week. Time to shoot the shit and have a good time, gentlemen. Thanks for having me. Glad to be here, as always. What's that smell? <laughs> the barbecue that drivers aren't making. <laughs> uh, no, hey. So we're let's start with the drivers' rights. You know, we went over earlier in the show. We went over the drivers' bill of rights. You know, things like hey, respect shouldn't be a job perk. But yet, how many ads do you see out there where we treat you with respect? You should treat everyone with respect. I mean, you guys have driven. I've driven. We've definitely all encountered our situations where you didn't get that respect. How how's that resonate with you, Justin? Um, just going down that list, not a lot that I would disagree with, except maybe the order in which it's in. You know, the the like number one, treat me like a person. It's a little vague. Uh, if you take number three, I should be t- paid for my time that I work, put that to number one, that pretty much takes care of half the list right there. Now, Gord, you know, you, you've done the job. When we talk about driver pay, I know that's something you've had many conversations on. Uh, what's some of the most notable things that you think we can improve upon that would make drivers want to be in trucking? Cause right now it's not pretty sexy. Well, it was said in the, in, in that, uh, supposed bill of rights which should have uh, a mirror bill of responsibilities on the part of drivers which we often forget about i could go on about that at length but yeah um pay that's it every single minute you're at work you should be being compensated uh this nonsense of well you know we're too busy we can't get you unloaded for six hours or oh, shoot, we sent you the wrong pickup number and we got to call this other guy and he's gone and then you don't get an answer for two hours and you're waiting for dispatch. You know, a a lot of that stuff that's out of the driver's control and is not mechanically related or some breakdown or act of God should be absolutely compensated. And whoever's involved in the load, the broker, the company, the customer, up to them to figure it out. Just, it shouldn't even be a question. You get paid. You're at work, you get paid, done. It's a crazy concept. I'm doing work for you, progressing your operation. I just want to get paid. That's it. Uh, one, of the, one of the things that were listed on there is having the necessary uh, ability to get healthy food options and stay, remain healthy. You know, Lombard, that is a passion of yours. I, I imagine you're a huge advocate for companies being responsible for making sure that these things are available to their drivers. Yeah, I'm really pumped you brought that up because that it, that's become my whole mission it is about cha- like I use the phrase often to change the environment and change the culture regarding health and overall fitness in the trucking industry. And I always lead it with change the environment because, uh, as I mentioned, the stats on the show, when you look at the obesity rates, the chronic disease rates and what the status quo is, just what the current environment is for those numbers to be what they are. It means that that's what the environment, current status quo environment delivers. Like that's how it's set up from the educational standpoint, from the carriers, from from employee development. So you have to think about it being a driver, like a driver, especially a company guy, is an employee and other companies have what's called employee development along the way. And when you don't 
have it ingrained in the culture from the company level, then, I mean, you're not going to see it in the rest of the industry. I mean, that should be, I was actually just at the Ambest conference in San Antonio a couple of weeks ago talking about this. And I've had this discussion because as you know, I work with, you know, the, the better for you option out there of, of super coffee, like a healthier energy drink out there with no added sugars. And, you know, <laughs> the, the, uh, yeah, had brief, brief plug, but the thing is, and I was talking about this on my show recently, you know, when it comes to changing this environment and when it comes to healthier options for guys, putting healthier options out there, it means taking something away. It means taking something away that um, it is possibly making other people money. And when it comes to doing that, when it comes to the trade-off of taking unhealthy options out of, you know, the driver's environment and replacing it with the better options, people may lose money, but the end result is you're going to save lives. And, you know, I think we were kind of jumping around on this in Twitter earlier with Gord and I, with a tweet from our friend Rust Belt Kid, you know, just because something is cheaper and, uh, you know, more readily available doesn't make it automatically better for consumers or for the environment. If something's killing you, is it, is it, it yeah, if it's, if it's killing the driver, if, if, the, if what's being offered to the driver essentially leads them to an earlier death, is it, is it for their best interest? Is it, is it in their well-being and how they should be, you know, conducting themselves regularly? I mean, that's, that's the biggest thing out, out there is when you know, I talk to drivers, they will always mention the options, the lack thereof, the options. Any drive, you can pull any random driver on the show, and they're going to say, "There's just nothing that great out here." Nothing accessible to a semi truck. Exactly. And I mean, all right, let, let's dissect that because driver parks a truck. All right, well, you can go anywhere once that truck's parked. Well, can you? I mean, yeah, we live in the day of Uber, but with the wages where they're at, drivers forfeiting two hours on each end of their trip for free. Can you really afford an Uber? That might be the difference between you making your mortgage and not in today's world. And if you're doing that on every stop. The, the ELD kind of gets in the way of that. Like, uh, you know, you, with, with your time being so regulated, you're, 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 you're kind of. Then you got some dispatcher hitting you up like, hey, you took an extra 20 minute. Well, yeah, I was waiting for my Uber and I wanted to get a healthy lunch. That's not going to fly. We already know. And anyone out there saying that's going to be okay. Let a driver do that for a while and see how the productivity gets measured on that truck. I mean, it's just one of those things where systemically it's broken. The whole system's broken. Uh, the fact that respect is listed as a job perk, the fact that we have to talk about a bill going through Congress to get bathroom access, uh, healthy food options, the whole thing's broken. So if you guys had to pluck one thing, and I'm going to go around the each, if you had to pluck one thing that you think would make the most dramatic impact. Uh, penalizing shippers and receivers that waste drivers time. I mean, that's, it, everything boils down to that because motivate them with money. Exactly. You know, it, it, whether you're on the company side of the, or the owner operator side, as soon as somebody tries to put their foot down, it doesn't matter for the shippers or receivers because there's going to be 20 companies behind them. That's more than happy to take that spot. I think that's huge. Cause if you're penalizing them with money, which drives the world, then there's be some motivation to get those trucks in and out of there. So these people can further their, themselves down the path to wherever they're going and possibly the truck would make more money. I think it would be an incentive for carriers to want that. The, the, the cost of something is how much you care about it. And if you're trying to run everything as cheap as possible, that just means you don't care. Well, they're focused on customer service and they're not focused on the customer service or the experience of the driver, which then drives it to the situation that we're in now where you're in a no-win scenario. Lombard, if you had to pick one thing that you thought would make the most impact in trucking, what would it be? Uh, yeah, it's hard because, I mean, the, in this article and in this list of Bill of Rights, which is a really well-written piece, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's tough to pick one, but I really, and I know this is kind of like the, the lower hanging fruit, but I, re I really think it boils down to I should be for the, paid for the time I work. I mean, in other professions that require uh, professionals to be traveling outside of, you know, the, where, their, where their domicile is. Um, I mean, that's a, you know, the, there's you, a company is paying for that. Like when your labor requires you to leave where you live, where you're not going home every day. I mean, that is like as the labor, like if you're that person doing that job where you're not going home to the, where you pay rent or pay a mortgage, if you're, if you're not going home to that residence, there's, there's value in that. The fact that you as a company are, you know, you need to employ labor that's forced to not stay home, then, you know, there, there's fair compensation for that. We, you know, they have it for, you know, it works that way with, with so many other industries. 
I think that's what it boils down to. Like the healthier option, like the truck stops being better for sure. The healthier options for sure. But I, it, it, but at the end of the day, I think labor is going to respond to the incentive of, of what the pay is. And that checks out. I, I'm on side with a client. I'm not here for free. You know, I want to be paid. Everyone wants to be paid. Yeah. I mean, it, 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 it applies to what Justin and Mike said, and it sort of encompasses it all, but like, consider the human element, you know, truck drivers get treated like numbers and like machines. Right. And, uh, you know, I, there was a, there was an article that Adam Wingfield posted or a, a tweet. And it was talking about how truck stops are going to these, like, you know, you know, uh, eat and run sort of models where it's all fast food. And that belies the sort of spreadsheet brain people that run this industry thinking about, well, You've only got half an hour. You're only taking your 30 minute break. And then you got to go, 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 go. There's no more sitting down. There's no more options. And that's all downstream of the fact that we've forgotten the human element. We don't think paying people for their time is important because we've forgotten the human element. We don't think uh, promoting a driver and and, uh, coaching him and making his career better, like Mike said, or his health, because we don't consider them human. We're not considering the human element. We just need to consider the human element more and stop treating truck drivers like an afterthought, like a cost, like a machine, like a line item, because at the end of the day, that's what causes all of these other problems. No, I think that's huge. So with that, I, I don't know if you, you, the audience, can catch the reoccurring theme. Um, basically, we, we talked to three drivers in person and they all unprompted said getting paid for your time is huge. And then we had drivers all over the comments on that survey saying getting paid for your time is huge. Um, Yeah. So until we actually do something about that, I'm pretty sure that driver appreciation week is ultimately just a pizza party for entry level employees and a Facebook post. (laughs) Yeah. But Charles, did you have any thoughts before we we jump out of here? No, honestly, I want to take a moment to thank the men and women of the road. You're making the sacrifices. You're doing a job that is not as sexy as people want to depict it in their recruiting ads. But at the end of the day, you show up every day. You do the job no matter how glorious it may not be. And uh, thank you. I appreciate you. We appreciate you. And we're doing our best to raise awareness. And hopefully next year when your company advertises their barbecue, you can tell them, hey, can I just get a bonus? All right. Well, like all good things that got to come to an end and driver's appreciation week should be all year. I'm your host, Charles Gracie, and uh, thanks for tuning in the sense per mile. And I'm your co-host, Paul Gibson. See you next time.